So today we have a lot of very exciting Star Wars news. But before we get into the juicy meat and potatoes, take a look at this. This is from The Hollywood Reporter, Natalie Portman's interview at the Cannes Film Festival, and she looks amazing, but there was one picture that really caught my eye. I'm getting major Padme Amidala on Naboo vibes from this, in the meadows. The outfit is very reminiscent of one of the ones she wore in Attack of the Clones, you can't deny it. And you guys know this, I'm a huge prequels fan, and growing up watching Star Wars as a young girl, Padme was one of those characters I really related to, and it's kind of sad we're not going to get any new content with her. After having died in Revenge of the Sith, our biggest hope was for the Kenobi show in a flashback, but while she was referenced while she was mentioned by Kenobi to Leia, we didn't see any new scenes for flashbacks, no involvement from Natalie but I'd love for them to do more with the character in the future at some point. I did enjoy some of the E.K. Johnston books, I guess Tales of the Jedi showed us her funeral again, but does that really count? Not really. But I understand it's very difficult to find a show or a movie where she'd fit in, because apart from Tales of the Jedi Season 2, which is coming out next year, I can't see a way for them to do it. Now we know that Millie Bobby Brown was rumoured to be in something Star Wars related, and some fans have noted she does look quite a bit like a young Padme, so if they do ever need a younger Padme, if they do like a backstory, if they do a show based around Padme, May's life, Millie Bobby Brown would work well. But today, my dear friends, we have some big Star Wars updates, and we begin with Skeleton Crew. A double whammy of news for this one, Jaleel White from Family Matters has been cast as a pirate in the show, working alongside Vane, who we saw in The Mandalorian Season 3. He reveals he was in a makeup chair for two hours every single day on set. Not just this, he also confirmed what I suspected for a very long time, which I've put forward in the past, that Skeleton Crew is going to release in November or December of this year it still is coming in 2023, despite some rumours that it's going to be pushed back. So they're going to fit it in, and that means by the end of the year, we would have had three instalments of the Mandoverse, Mando Season 3, the Ahsoka show coming in August, and Skeleton Crew to wrap up the year, probably the same release timetable as The Book of Boba Fett, late in the year in December. And I've got to say that's very appropriate for a show like this. Inspired by Spy Kids, Goonies, it's going to have a Christmas Amblin vibe to it. Also, in Skeleton Crew news, Jude Law describes his character, who we do know is going to be a Jedi, as a Han Solo type of figure. Now, unlike Han, he's got the Force, but that doesn't mean that all these years since the fall of the Jedi Order, he's not been smuggling and doing other things too, so I can see him being a very unique type of Force user. Staying on the subject of the Mandoverse, over the last couple of days, I've been covering the latest from Empire Magazine. Comments by Kathleen Kennedy, Dave Filoni. There is a lot, in particular for the Ahsoka show, which I did cover yesterday. Some new comments by Filoni about Grand Admiral Thrawn, the role he's going to play, and respecting what Timothy Zahn did in the 90s. But today, just another tidbit, Natasha Lubordiso praises the visual effects and the props. And the one practical effect she praises more than any other on set was the Lothcat, and we did did see it in the trailer. Now these have appeared as CGI in The Mandalorian Season 1, but they used a practical one on set, and this one has a spine, and Natasha even has the gall to say it's as cute as Grogu when you're up close. I don't know about that, but it is adorable. These creatures feature heavily in Star Wars Rebels, we saw them in Chapter 4 of Season 1 of Mando, but also in Season 2 in Chapter 13 The Jedi, just as an easter egg. And you know, these little additions help to make the universe feel whole, feel like one big continuity, especially given that Star Wars Rebels is the precursor to the Ahsoka show, so there are going to be some major connections and tie-ins there. This is not going to be the only one, I promise you that. So staying on the subject of Natasha Liu Bordiso's comments, she also talks about embodying Sabine Wren, what that was like on set, moving the character from animation to live action. Here's the segment. Another Rebel's favourite moving into live action is Sabine, played by the amazing Natasha Liu. And while she's a Mandalorian with armor, she regularly customizes with her own spray. The extended Ahsoka footage showed something intriguing, Sabine swinging a lightsaber. And we all know, if you've seen Star Wars Rebels, this is Ezra's lightsaber. In her own words, she says, I'm just really glad that's out there. It's been really hard talking about my fight training without talking about the fact I've got a lightsaber. It's saber training, which is literally all I've been doing for so long. So we are going to see a wield the lightsaber in a lot of scenes. It's not just a one-off. But here's the interesting bit, because she does say Sabine has advanced in terms of saber skills since Star Wars Rebels. Here's what she said. The challenge was having to channel two different galactic cultures, the Mandalorians in terms of physicality, this was very western, and then the saber style of the samurai, a Japanese influence that Dave Filoni really wants to lean in on. We saw this in particular on Corvus in Chapter 13 of Mando Season 2. 
She says, I was trying to embody those two things, sometimes one right after the other. In the choreography, it was super interesting because there's such different modes of being. I really had fun with the journey of trying to master both. And I've said this before, because Natasha was also a Star Wars Rebels fan, she gave everything to this role. She trained extra hard, gave 100% every single time, every day on set. But interestingly enough, she would not confirm if it is indeed Ezra's lightsaber. I think it's a given, based on Star Wars Rebels and she's just playing coy, but she would not say yes. So staying on the same Empire Magazine issue, I want to highlight something for Andor Season 2, which was really, really funny. I posted this on Twitter because it was just hilarious. Denise Goff, who plays Dedra Miro, was asked about torturing Bix. That was a huge moment in Season 1, and she basically commented on the aftermath, because right until the end of Rick's Roads, the last episode, when Andor comes and saves Bix, she's still messed up in the head from the torture and that seems like it's gonna stay. Here's the quote, The digging is getting even deeper for the second and final season, which is currently filming. Adria Arjona, who plays mechanic Bix Killeen, was tortured by Denise Goff's sadistic Imperial Lieutenant Dedra Miro towards the end of season 1, and they promise in season 2 we're going to see the aftermath, undergoing a heavy psychological excavation, and Goff says the following, In one word, it could be that Bix is now just all f***ed up. But, there's a kind of sugar way, and then there's a protein way. Tony, who by the way, as I covered the other day, is no longer working on the show, always talks about the protein, and he's hired lots of actors who are on high-protein diets. Adria is on a very high-protein diet. Bix is completely messed up from that torture, and we're gonna see that recovery in season 2. Bear in mind, Tony Gilroy's not afraid to get real, deal with real human beings, and really try to show the grittiness of this galaxy. We rarely see consequences on this scale. Something as real, vulnerable, and human as mentally recovering from torture. I guess you could say with Book of Boba and the Back to Tank, but this is very different. We also get confirmation that Kino Loy is returning for season 2, he survived Narkina 5, but Andy Serkis suggests he stayed on that planet, in that prison. He says Narkina 5 is very lonely. So some very exciting stuff to look forward to. This was a very insightful addition, and in terms of getting fans hyped, they really hit the right notes, not just for Andor and the Ahsoka show, but also for the Acolyte. I'm keeping an open mind. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and if you want more videos you can't find here on YouTube while also getting your name at the end of my videos, then click the link down there in the description. Become a patron, you will not regret it. But until the next one guys, may the force be with you always.